This is a, a real mini presentation today about the real Da Vinci Code. It's something that's going to dramatically change and shift everything. So I'm going to share with you the math, how it all works. You're looking at a Da Vinci drawing that you will not find in the complete works of Leonardo Da Vinci as your coffee table book published by the mainstream media that is currently on sale at Barnes and Noble and chain bookstores. This is a picture that Leonardo da Vinci drew that's been suppressed because it speaks to the truth of what's taking place in the world and you realize that it's not changed since the time of da Vinci, late 1400s. What you see here is a drawing that was a, a birthday present for the Borgia family. At the time of da Vinci, of course, he was working for the Roman Catholic Church. At the same time, he was working as a top military weapons contractor for the first crime families on the planet, the people who started to make money off of war. And so the Borgias and the Medici family, interestingly enough, the Medici family, powerful, powerful family, instilled five popes into the Vatican. But the reality is that da Vinci drew exactly what's taking place on the planet. You have a division between the religious world and the political world. You've got a manipulation of the population that is currently engaging the gross deception, this thing that we call physical reality. And in essence, you have the pagan bull symbol of Baal, the symbol for fertility god, which currently represents the symbol of the Roman Catholic Church. And that image is seen carrying the tree of life across the stormy oceans, controlled by the royalty of Europe who stand in the crest eagle all over the planet. So we're obviously we have profiteering off of humanity's suffering that's being advanced by the military, medical, petrochemical, pharmaceutical cartel. This term omnicide translates itself into everything, including the music that you listen to today. One of the beautiful things that we've discovered in decrypting the real Da Vinci Code is that there is a musical note, a tone frequency called A440, Hertz tuning. That is the standard tuning. When you turn your radio on, you listen to any music from rap to rock and roll to the classical. You're listening to it played in A440 Hertz. Well, where that source is from is back in 1918, the Rockefeller family and the Rockefeller Foundation funding the arts paid for the American Federation of Musicians to institute A440 tuning. It was not very successful. The world's leading musicians screamed, say, how can you do that? We have Baroque music, we have all these wonderful music played in different tunings. Well, they didn't have a good time of it, so they gave it over to a publicist, a propaganda minister by the name of Joseph Goebbels, propaganda minister for the Third Reich. And so that propaganda administered by Goebbels eventually got the world to literally create the standard tuning of A440, which if you understand bioenergy and you understand biophysics, it puts a resonant frequency block from here down. So if you're wondering why the world today has gone literally egoic into paganism, honoring the false gods of medicine, of science, the false gods of popping magic pills to cure every ill, you realize that all of this egocentrism that cuts the heart off has been primarily done by the changing of the frequencies by which we literally thrive. And so I'm going to be sharing with you the real Da Vinci Code. The real Da Vinci Code deals with the musical mathematical matrix of the universe. The real Da Vinci Code deals with water and water science and hydrosonics, how it's all coming out of water. In essence, it explains why I'm going to give you the best definition of who you are. You are a digital, that's mathematical, bio-holographic. Biology, holograms, you know what a hologram is, right? A digital bio-holographic precipitation, like a little nidus in the cloud suddenly begins to precipitate into a drop of rain and drops and falls to earth, that's precipitation. A digital bio-holographic precipitation, crystallization, water. 80% of your Holy Spirit filled temples full with water. Water is a tetrahedron structure, it's a liquid 
crystal superconductor. So you're a digital bioholographic precipitation, crystallization, miraculous manifestation of divine frequency vibration coming out of water. Now, this is another Da Vinci drawing. It's of a Moses looking character. He called it Old Man Water. Moses' name means, Hebrew translated to English, saved by the water. And that here you see Moses' staff is stuck down into the water watching the swirling, that Da Vinci is studying the science of the swirling of water. And it's the same science that deals with the world's leading mathematicians and physicists who have identified literally the cosmic frequencies and literally the sound of creation. And the sound of creation happens to be nine core creative frequencies. That's all she wrote. Think about it. If you were God, would you make things simple or hard? Simple. Exactly. There's only nine numbers in the universe. And in fact, it's even more simpler than that. Creator says that I'm going to take the nine core creative frequencies and they're all going to be based on three numbers. Three, six, and nine. That Nikola Tesla taught his students. Royal Raymond Reif, John Keeley, if humanity only knew the power of the three sixes and nines, it would be a completely different universe. This is the power of the three sixes and nines. This, what you're looking at is Marco Rodin's work. It starts where you see, let's say you start at one. You go one and one is two, double the number. Two and two is four, you draw a line from two to four. Four and four is eight, eight and eight is 16, where one plus six is seven. That's what you do in ancient mystery school Pythagorean math. You reduce the multiple digits into the single digit integer. That's your nine core creative frequencies. That's essentially, there's nine numbers in the universe. That's all. Ten is a man-made concept. Zeros are placeholders in the decimal system. It's not of God. It's not God's language. We're talking about the language of creation, the language of the creator, or what the Bible talks about in the beginning. In the beginning, there was a creator. There was the water, even before there was the word, even before the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible, you had the water. Go back, reread, study Genesis 1 through 6. You see that I'm telling you the truth. So that the water is part of the triune God. Literally, even when you go in-depth Bible study, even in the Christian community, the scholars will tell you that's the truth. Everybody else is operating in gross deception if they think that that's not the case. You're going to learn more about this in the next couple of minutes. In the old days, it was called polymath. Sources from the Greek word polys, meaning much, great in quantity, or mathes, meaning learning. So a person who excels in multiple fields, particularly the arts and sciences, also called Renaissance man, is a master of polymath. Now I know most of you hate math. I know most of you didn't do well in math because that's man's math. God's math is real simple. It doesn't lose everybody. So da Vinci is seen as an epitome of the Renaissance man. He was a master of polymath. And you look at the ancient understanding. These definitions come from Webster Dictionary. You never heard these terms. Why haven't you heard about this? The fundamental essence of everything. Why? Because you're a dumbed down mind control slave of the global elite. And now you're waking up. History is related to math. They mean the same. Everything sources from math. The creative language is math. If the spoken word, it goes into the water, into actually the firmament. Remember Genesis 1, 2 says, the beginning was the creator, then, the spirit of the creator hovered over the face of the water, divided the water from the water to create the firmament or the dome. Some Bibles say the ether. And then that's akin to, in physics, the quantum field. Into that quantum field was the word was spoken. What is word but sound? What is sound? Electromagnetic frequencies. What's that? Simple math. So these are the electromagnetic frequencies of creation that the creator has blessed us because he loves us. He, she loves us. And there's a covenant, there's a contract. The covenant says that the creator will always be there for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for all the children, all the 144,000 tribes, all of the people who have the love of the creator and faith and understand the creative technology of prayer and the lip, the labiaratum, the creative instruments. Because if you're created in the image of the creator, then guess what? The creator creates with the spoken word, with love, with heartfelt loving intention to create in joy, a blessing that can go off and be creative. Then guess what you are able to do is the same. 
the lips in prayer is the creative technology and the heartfelt loving intention comes because of the key that opens that door of faith. You gotta have faith. Philo math, lover of learning. Plato and Aristotle define mathema as relative to discipline or, or discipline. Doctrina, learning the fundamental laws governing everything. You know, you buy a refrigerator, you get a user's manual. You buy a car, you're told you take your car in X, Y, Z time period to keep your maintenance up. How come they don't give women giving birth to babies the fundamental knowledge about what they're looking at and how to take care of it. So now these philosophers and their many disciples consider mathema in terms of education, which included arithmetic, geometry, astronomy, and music. And language that I'm speaking right now, English, is a mathematical creative technology that is the maximum dumbing down technology ever invented. I'll show you why in a couple of minutes. So Da Vinci said, this is a quote from Da Vinci, there's no certainty where one cannot apply any of the mathematical science. And the road to finding oneself, including your highest qualities and creative potentials, is paved by mystery school math engaging the matrix. Now, what's a matrix? Webster's defined matrix as something within or something from which something else originates. It's not just a Hollywood film. A rectangular array of numbers, algebraic symbols, or mathematical functions. Matrices play intimate roles in every aspect of life. The word is found several times in the Bible, in Exodus and in Numbers. Moses made sacrifice to the Lord. Everything that openeth the matrix. That was done so that the Hebrews could be freed. Today, we're enslaved. Every which way possible. Profiteering off of humanity's ignorance and suffering is the game plan. So that how do you come out of her, my people, lest ye be infected by her plagues, her lunacy, her hypocrisy? How do you do that? Real simple. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Then all else comes to you. How come? Because the kingdom of heaven in the religious world, in the theological realm, is the musical mathematical matrix. That's right here, right now. It's precipitating, crystallizing, miraculously manifesting you right here, right now. It's running through you, you're in it. Without it, you'd be not even aware of anything. You'd not be here. We would not see you. Why did Da Vinci write backward? The same reason that the global industrialists back in the 1400s when Da Vinci was starting to do his work decided that they were going to change new world language to create a new world order. You've got to have a new world language. Let's call it English. Let's get the King James Bible in English. When? Same time. Late 1400s began. 1515, done. King James and his boys, Sir Francis Bacon, alias William Shakespeare. Shakespearean plays is like the media of today. The theater was the media, and the message was in English. And now let's take a look. Da Vinci wrote backwards because what they did is they flipped. They flipped alphanumerically. I just told you that everything in creation is math. The labia ratum, the lips, are the creative instruments. So now, if you're going to take the creative language and the creative instruments and you start to speak English, here's what happens. And by the way, these revelations came out in 1998 with healing codes for the biological apocalypse. If you're just beginning in this kind of like initiation into reality and to the truth that shall set you free, you might want to start with healing codes for the biological apocalypse and then graduate to where we now are. Love the real Da Vinci code. So Dr. Paleo back in 1996 had a couple visions. He saw numbers and letters on his windshield and he learned that there's an alphanumeric for every letter, just like in Gematria, for every letter, there's a number, an alphanumeric relationship. And that he took the words, the English language, like you see here, A to Z, one to 26. So it's one through nine, one through nine, one through eight. You see that? Now you take the words faith, trust in God. Oh, isn't that interesting? They're all eights, the infinity sign. Well, so then what you do is you take the number eight. And in the Bible, the creator never adds, never subtracts, always multiplies. This accelerates Acceleration of your divine inspiration and your spiritual evolution is exponentially accelerating because it's multiplying. And so you take the numbers eight and do the multiples of eight. One times eight equals eight. Two times eight equals 16, where one plus six is seven. Three times eight equals 24, plus two plus four is six. Four times eight equals 32, where three plus two is five. You see the countdown pattern, don't you? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, nine, eight, six, five, three, two, three, two. See it? Which is the what? The English alphabet backwards. So the sacred languages of Hebrew, ancient Aramaic, Babylonian, and Sanskrit 
were sacred. They were considered sacred languages. Why? Because when you spoke them, the resonant energy had an immediate divine intercommunication, communion, and a divine interpersonal connection. You had this heartfelt, loving understanding. And now you understand why, for those of you who are married, you say A to your spouse and they hear B. There's no connection. That's now you understand why men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Because ultimately the heart loving connection is blocked mathematically, frequency energetically. So now you take interesting thing, you take the English alphabet backward, add it to the English alphabet forward. Eight plus one is nine, seven plus two is nine, six plus three is nine, five plus four is nine. It's always nine. What does that tell you? It means that there's a perfection in the English language. That means that it was designed, it didn't happen by chance. Some genius did it, and they did it to have the exact impact that I'm telling you, to dumb you down maximally, to make you think that you're simply a human being when in fact you are a superhuman being now emerging from the gross deception because it's time. Now take the multiples of three sixes and nines and you see why Tesla said, and it wasn't just Tesla. Pythagoras, Vitruvius, Aristotle, Plato, all talked about the three sixes, nines, and the eights. So they're special. All multiples of three, six, nine always give you three, six, and nine. And so when you now have the revelation of the original musical scale, the core creative frequencies of reality, you realize they are three, nine, six, four, one, seven, five, two, eight, six, three, nine, seven, four, one, and eight, five, two. That is all three, sixes, and nines when you do the Pythagorean mathematical conversion. Rodin, the first time I had the first mathematical genius, and I'm humbled and privileged to work with the world's leading physicists and mathematicians right now who have advanced so many wonderful blessings of revelation regarding 528 hertz frequency of love and all of these numbers and what they really mean and how they fit with sacred geometry and cosmology. Everything in the universe now we understand is based on this system. He starts right there, real simple. And then he goes into more complex analyses where he creates the matrix of the universe. And he looked, he put him on the board and I'm looking, holy smoke, this guy's putting up the Sofeggio frequency. 396, 417, 528, repeating in the matrix. And from this simple work, he developed the more complex Holroy structure of the universe. So this is Rodin's Holroy. Now sitting in the audience is a fellow who you should definitely get to know. His name is Nassim Haramin. He's a metaphysical physicist who took Einstein's field equations and factored in torque, spin, and velocity and advanced Einstein's work dramatically to come up with his structure of the universe. I'll show you in a second. He said to Marco Rodin in this audience, he says, Marco, I appreciate your work. He says, but you don't have it quite right. You forgot polarity. What goes up must come down. There's a positive, there's a negative. He says, it's not a single toroid. The real structure of the universe is a double toroid. So the resonanceproject.org presents you Nassim Haramid's work that shows you the structure of the universe is a figure eight. And if you see his animation, but it's spinning. You see it has a spinning, spiraling, and coming back to the beginning, just like a figure eight does. Now you have just learned how come what goes around comes around. You just learned as you sow, so shall you reap. You just learned that paying it forward is a great blessing to you. You just learned that giving is received. You just got shifted out of this whole ignorance, this paradigm of scarcity consciousness into the great abundance, the way the world really works.